By the way, I heard you earlier. God bless you. I'm a priest. I agree with everything you're doing. I don't know how you're doing it, but I don't, I don't know if you bear any fruit, but try and keep it up. Priest? I endorse what you do. Okay. okay. God bless you. Do I want a gospel track or anything? No, I, I, I know it all. I've written commentaries. You know, I'm, I'm good. You're a priest, like a Catholic priest or Roman priest? No, or? an Episcopal priest, but oh. I'm trying to lead the Episcopal Church because they don't believe in it. Oh, I don't know anything about the Episcopal Church or anything like that. Well, they used to be good. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. But keep it up. All right. God bless you. Yeah. Save out here tonight. The Bible says in Hebrews, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. So the word of God, it will pierce your heart. It will, it will pierce your soul and spirit, people. So this is why people hear the word of God. They start, you know, getting all emotional and stuff. They start getting all mad because the word of God is piercing your heart. And the heart is the battleground. The heart is where Jesus wants territory. So the Bible says that, well, by the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So all the evil things in life come from people's hearts. So the word of God, when people speak it, when you read it, it goes straight to your heart. So God, God's word is like a sword. So if you live in the sin and God's word gets, gets to you, that sword is going to pierce all that darkness inside your heart. And many people, they're going to be like, oh, man, I don't shut up, bro. Because that, that, that darkness in their heart is being broken down. So if, you have, if, you're, if you're a very cold-hearted person, you have a stony heart, you know, you don't care about people, you hate people. Your heart needs um your heart needs the word of God. The, the word of God will take away that stoniness outside your heart. The word of God will give you a heart of flesh. The word of God will make your heart soft and full of love and joy because the world will make your heart very, very bitter. And many people you have bitter hearts, you know, you have a lot of hatred inside your heart. You have a lot of unforgiveness inside your heart. This is why Jesus Christ, his word will actually purify your heart. His word, his word will change your heart to the better because the heart is where all your problems come from. And many people, your belief system is in your heart also. So, you, so you, if you believe you're nobody, that stuff comes from your heart. If you, if you believe that you, you, you deserve to be mistreated, that comes from your heart. Your belief system is always in your heart. So the battleground is for the hearts of a human beings. So this is why you gotta, you gotta surrender your heart to Christ. Just surrendering your mind to Christ won't do anything. Having a knowledge of Jesus Christ is not going to do anything. So that's why many people say, hey, bro, I believe in God, but they still get drunk because their heart is still not with God. So having a knowledge of God is very different than like, you know, being surrendered to God. A lot of people know Jesus Christ after their sins, but the heart is not really converted to Christ. That's why you have people, you have pastors who still sleep around because their heart is not really with God. They have all the knowledge of God. They have knowledge and scriptures and stuff. They can remember Bible verses, but their heart is not with Christ. So if your heart comes to Christ, you will actually live out who, uh, what it means to be a Christian. You will actually walk to be, you actually walk, who, uh, walk as a born again believer because your heart is in it. But if your heart is not with Jesus Christ, then it doesn't matter if you call yourself a Christian. You will still be a Christian. You'd be a Christian. Um, Masturbated, you'd be a Christian hypocrite, you'd be a Christian gangster, you'd be a Christian something else that's that's ungodly because you have not surrendered your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. So coming to Jesus Christ is about surrender. You know, it's not about remembering Bible verses. It's about actually giving over to Christ. It's letting, it's letting Christ be Lord of your life. It's letting Christ be in your life and everything. You know, it's, it's not like you just be a Christian just on Sundays, but Monday through Saturday, you're just, you're just doing somebody different. That's what, it's not what that means. So when you surrender to Christ, it's a relationship with who Jesus is. It's having a true relationship. You know, you wake up, praise God. You go to sleep, you praise God. You talk, you talk to God throughout the day because God, God is always with you, you know? God, God is always with you. God gives you life. And God wants a relationship with you. So don't neglect, don't neglect relationship with God. Don't neglect a relationship with Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is your best friend. Jesus Christ is a father to the fatherless. A lot of people, you didn't have good fathers in your life. Some of you folks, your fathers were alcoholics, they were, they were abusers, or whatever like that. But Jesus Christ is a good father. God's a good father. God's always taking care of you. God knows your pain, and God wants to show you the light. God's a good shepherd. So if people walked out on you, Jesus Christ never walked out on you. When people abandoned you, Jesus Christ never abandoned you. God has, God has always been there for you. You're not alone in this world, people. You're not alone. 
the devil convince you that you're all the devil says you're alone but you're not alone you have somebody for there you have someone for you you have somebody with you he's he's always been there for you you just have to acknowledge him you have to actually acknowledge him people you don't acknowledge the lord and that's why you don't see any breakthrough in your life that's why you have no change in your life because you don't acknowledge god when god gives you a miracle you don't say thank you lord you don't say thank you anything you have no gratitude no thankfulness the more you start acknowledging god in your life the happier you'll be as a person because god gives you blessings here and there people god is always blessing you but you can't see it god gives you food god gives you water god gives you all this stuff and you take it for granted if god took this stuff away from you how would you be as a person would you still thank god would you still be thankful for anything in life because many folks you, know, you have no gratitude for your family you have no gratitude for your kids your wife your husband you have no gratitude god gave you that person for you to cherish but you use them like dirt god gave you those kids so you can teach them but you neglect them so the things in your life little things in your life you got to be grateful for because how can god give you big blessings if you're not even grateful for the little things here in life you're ungrateful for the little things so you need gratitude inside your heart we have we have gratitude inside your heart you actually start actually have you know what life's about life's life's about actually what love repent you gotta repent and understand that hate is ruining this life hate is ruining this generation pride this is why jesus christ will come back he will destroy the Bithen. he's over the children of pride because many people have too much pride inside their heart and if you have pride inside your heart you're not gonna have any good relationships in life you're not gonna have good kids you're not gonna have a good relationship with your with your spouse if you're full of pride because when you're full of pride you, you will give up on people You'll give up on relationships. You'll give up on your kids. You'll tell your kids there'll be nothing in life. You want to get a divorce with your spouse because you have pride in your heart because it's all about you. But if you have love in your heart, you won't give up on people. The Bible says love never fails. Love never fails. If you have true love inside your heart, your, your relationships won't fail. You know what I'm saying? But all these public relationships because people don't have love. It was never about love in the first place. It was, it's about them. But this is why, this is why you gotta walk in love. This is why you gotta have a change of heart. You gotta humble yourself and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let Jesus Christ give you the power to love. You can't do this by yourself. Your human effort is not gonna do anything. This is a spiritual war. You're, you are more spiritual than you are um, just flesh. You have a spirit, you have a soul and a spirit. So you, you gotta let Jesus Christ revive your soul. You gotta let Jesus Christ bring life to your spirit. So you actually know what true love is, true life is. Because right now, people, your flesh is in charge. But you, but you cannot live life through your flesh. Living life through your flesh is not true happiness. True joy is in your soul, is in your, is in your spirit. When God gives you true peace and joy inside your spirit, man, it's a beautiful life. You can control yourself. But it all starts, it all starts at the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. It all starts with coming to Jesus. It all starts with him, your peace. Your love, your joy, all starts with Jesus Christ. All the problems in your life, you need to take it to the cross of Jesus. You have to humble yourself and repent and come to the Lord. Because repentance is a gift. Repentance is a gift. You're not going to be able to repent on the day you die. The Bible says it's appointed man one time to die, then it's judgment. So after you die, you're being judged by God. So when you die, people, God's going to judge your lifestyle. Either you love or you didn't love. Either you love people properly or you didn't love people. Now, I'm not talking about loving people you choose. God's gonna judge you how you how you interact with all people, how you love all people. So if, if you're out here gossiping, if you're out here slandering, that's not love. That's not love. When you start talking about how your boss, when you start gossiping about that girl at work, that's not love. So many people feel like, oh yeah, I'm, I love people, I love people. No, you just love your friends. What about strangers? What about all the strangers in your life? Because God's gonna judge you about how you love everyone. So you can only do this by walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because as human beings, you cannot do this task by yourself. You cannot do this without God. It's only God's power Amen, that you can do this, people. You, you can only forgive people by God's grace, God's mercy. His power helps you forgive people. 
because many people you'll say, I'll never forgive that guy, I'll never forgive that girl. She did me wrong. That's hatefulness. The Bible says God won't forgive you if you don't forgive other people. If you don't forgive other people, God can't forgive you. So you need to learn how to forgive people. And you can only do that in love. You can't, you get, it's not a mental thing. It's a, it comes from the heart. It comes from the heart. So this, this commandment that God gives us to love each other, to love him, you can only do this if you abide in him because your own human effort is going to fail you because your own human emotions are going to fail you. You'll be so emotional and be like, well, he broke my heart. She broke me up. She took all my money. This is why you got to, this is why you got to rely on the Lord. This is why you got to put your faith in Christ because only Christ, only his love, only his love people can help you. So, so this is why, folks, this is why we got to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why we got to put our faith in the Lord. We cannot put our faith in ourselves. The Bible says, curse is every man who put his trust in flesh. To put your trust in flesh, you're going to curse yourself. You can't put your trust in yourself. You got to put your trust in God. If you put your trust in self, what happens when you feel yourself? You're going to feel horrible. You're going to feel miserable. This is why God doesn't want you to trust yourself. God does not say, oh, trust yourself. No, he says trust in him. You will fail yourself time and time out. You tell yourself, I'm gonna stop I'm gonna stop drinking, then you get drunk again. So it's not it's not about you, folks. You can't do it by yourself. You have to rely on the Lord to help you. You have to cry out to Jesus to help you. Only He can help you. You can't help yourself. This is why people make New Year's resolutions. A lot of people they fail. People say, Well, I'm gonna get in shape this year. Then they fail. People say, you know what? I'm gonna stop cheating on my wife. They keep they, they keep failing. So this is why you gotta stop relying on yourself and rely on the Lord Jesus Christ to help you, rely on his word to help you. Because Christ is here to help. God is here to help. Because people, you need help. You, you, you can't do this by yourself. The devil wants to get you all in the head to think that you don't need nobody's help. No, you need help, people. This generation definitely needs help. This generation needs a lot of help. We all need help. We all fall short from the glory of God. So come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to repent. You have to confess your sins to the Lord. You got to come out of wickedness. You got to stop choosing darkness and choose the light. You got to stop choosing the way of wickedness. And you got to choose the light. The way of wickedness is darkness. And you will stumble. So stop stumbling in the darkness. Let Jesus Christ show you the beauty of life. And you can actually start walking. Which you're supposed to walk in. Because only the Lord Jesus Christ would tell you the truth. Jesus Christ says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ says he is the truth. He didn't say Muhammad's the truth. He didn't say Buddha's the truth. He didn't say believe what you want. Jesus Christ says, hey, I'm the real deal. I'm God. Believe in me. Follow me. Jesus Christ made it very simple. Jesus Christ made it very, very simple. He says, I am the way. People are so confused. Like, who's God, bro? Who's God? What's the Jesus Christ says, I'm the way. He made it very simple. He made it very simple. So it's not hard to know God because God came down in the flesh. God dwelt among us. He did amazing things. And God's coming back and God's going to reign here on earth with his saints. So get to know God before it's too late. Don't die without knowing who Jesus Christ is. Don't die without knowing God. I'm not talking about just because you say you believe in God, but do you actually have a relationship with God? You have a conversation with God. Is God your best friend? Is Jesus Christ your best friend? Because he needs to be. God is coming back. Are you prepared to meet your God? Are you prepared to meet your to meet the Lord, the host? Because only Jesus Christ can purify you. Only Jesus Christ. Keep up the good work. Oh, praise God, man. Give God the glory. So much darkness here. Oh, yeah. I agree. And all these folks coming through, whatever words you put out, you don't know what they're, where that's going to land. They Amen. your bread out in the water, you don't know how it will return, but it will. Amen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let the, the Lord use me. You know, let the Lord use me. Good for you and your whole There's all kinds of people oh, praise God. who are contemplating who knows what as they walk by. And you may not think they're hearing you, but it lands. It lands in ways you can't contemplate. Yeah, Amen. Amen. God gets the increase, man. I'm just here to plant seeds as possible. It's just for doing a great fire. job. Amen. Oh, thank you for doing it. Oh, Being bold God. and getting out here. Amen. Yeah, man. People need, people need hope. You know, you there's not much hope around, around here. They, oh, they yeah. Here and they, <laughs> they think they're going to win a, a million dollars, and they go over here and they think, 
you know, they're gonna get the, the best service or best food or whatever that can make yeah. them fulfill but it doesn't right. do it. Yeah, yeah, it's temporary, it's vanity, you know. Yeah. It's all vanity. That's what I'm trying to teach this generation that, you know, that hey, like the stuff that same promotes, like it looks very flashy and stuff and you see all these, you know, celebrities like be like, Oh yeah, look at me but no one's really happy, you know, in that lifestyle. No one's really fulfilled in that lifestyle. It's an empty lifestyle. Yeah. We've seen it empty time and time again. Oh yeah. They still have problems. Yeah, the same people who promote that lifestyle, they still have their problems themselves. So, it's like I said, people are just spiritually blind, you know. So that's we gotta give them the light of Christ. Only only Christ can really show them the light. Because even in me, I, I live this lifestyle, and I I dived in a lot of like vain philosophy, like Romans and um, like Roman emperors, like that philosophy. And I thought I was wise. Stoic you know? ideas. Yeah, stoic ideas. I thought I was very wise, but all this stuff never really made sense to me because it's like they'll give you like kind of like open type of like answers and I'm just like eh, that doesn't really feel right but with, with Christ it's like everything is like solid you know it makes sense it's firm it's like it's no playing around it's no like sugar coating stuff yeah. and it's brought it just brought peace to my soul man when I start reading awesome. like I love Proverbs and stuff like that because it's very simple it gets to the point it's not like going around in circles and stuff and everything everything with God is very simple it's easy to understand and it's truthful and it's wise and God's always going to give us he's going to give us so much more too man if you just dive in deep but, you know, baby steps, though, of course. Well, what you're yeah. doing here today, man, is huge stuff. So I want to encourage you. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Thank you so much, God. Thank you so much, man. Stay safe out here tonight. Thank you. God bless you.